Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mustafa and you're watching Renovation School. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you the easiest method possible to install pot lights in a house. I claim that this is gonna be the easiest method possible. The reason why I say that is because you're gonna require the least amount of wiring possible. You barely have to open any drywall. I only had to open a small area for my light switch. And I also had to drill these holes for the actual pot lights and that was pretty much it. And the other thing is it's gonna be extremely DIY friendly. And on top of all of this, if you need to install a two-way switch, three-way switch, four-way switch, or let's say if you even want to have multiple switches around this room and all of them operate the same set of lights, you can do it with this setup. Very easy, very simple. I'm pretty confident you're gonna like it. So before we get any further, let's take a look at the before and after so you can have a better idea of what exactly we did here. This is an older house and this is the living room area here. As you can see it here, we don't have any light fixture or any source of light for nighttime inside this big room. At the very end of this area, we have that dining room and we have that very old chandelier that is existing there. Imagine if you're coming home very late at night, you have to walk through the living room, get to the dining room area, and turn on this light switch so you have a little bit of light inside this dining room slash living room area. So not only this is outdated, it's not very functional either. Now, please let me show you how it looks like after I fix this issue. standing in the living room area as of right now and on my right side I have the main entrance door to this house by the way this is a bungalow as you can see this is the living room area we have the bedrooms on my left side there's a bathroom here also below me there's a basement and above here we only have the attic so if we come in from the main entrance door he area here we have a set of light switches that are mounted on this wall here there's three switches on this wall. The very first one is operating the light that is located on the outside of the house right here. The second light switch is operating the light that is located up here. You may not be able to see it. And the very last switch is connected to that receptacle down here below the window. And that's designed for a lamp. Basically, if we connect the lamp to that switch, uh, to that receptacle and turn on this light switch on and off, the lamp is gonna go on and off. So this house was built in 1940s. At the time, there was no electricity. So a lot of these houses are missing lights on the ceilings. Back then, even after the electricity was coming to these houses, at that time, lamps were very common. So having that much fixtures was not that kind of a common thing. So today, because everything has changed, everybody wants pot lights in their houses. We are installing these pot lights. So what I'm planning on doing here is we want to have a set of three-way switch. We're gonna have a switch right here somewhere. I want to be able to basically walk inside this house and turn on this light switch and all these pot lights go on. And then I want to have another switch down here. So let's say at the end of the night when we wanna to go to the bed, let's say we wanna go this way because my bedrooms are located on this side. We can hit that switch and turn off all these lights. So basically we wanna be able to turn on or off these lights with these two switches that are located here. As you may know, in installing three-way switches require traveler's wires, but in today's application, I am gonna be installing a smart switch that is gonna solve that issue for me. So for this specific application, I don't have to run uh, traveler's wires between these two light switches that I'm gonna be installing in this house, and that is gonna make this a lot easier. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you what exactly is going on and what kind of a product I'm gonna be using here before I show you how I'm gonna do the wiring. This is the light switch that I picked for this job. It's made by Lutron Company. This light switch is compatible with LED lights and also it has all the dimming options that you need on it. Also this light is a smart, so it can be operated by an app. There's something super cool about this light switch and that's the fact that this could operate as a two-way switch. Let's say in an application that you need a one single light switch that can operate all your lights, 
this can do that 100% but because this comes with that extra remote control switch that does not require any maintenance or battery in it this light switch could also work as a three-way switch a four-way switch five-way switch or let's say if you want to have numerous amount of switches around the room that can operate the same set of lights for you this light switch can do all of that in one shot so in order to do that all you need to do is to buy more remotes and add it to the walls and the very cool thing about the remote is as i said it doesn't require any battery or maintenance so it's maintenance free and if you install this light switch on your walls nobody can tell the difference between this one and a regular light switch because it looks exactly the same so now that we know what exactly is going on we want the light switches over there i need to locate the exact location of my pot lights so as a result, I marked all these ceiling uh, joists basically. I used some tape and marked them all up. I'm gonna show you how exactly I did this. This is my trusty stud finder. The brand is Franklin Sensors. I am gonna leave a link to this product in the descriptions in case you're interested in buying one for yourself. You can find this on Amazon and so many other websites. So the way this works basically, you can put it onto the wall. There's a button here, I'm gonna push this and push this slightly toward the wall and then I'm gonna start moving it slowly until this finds or senses the studs that are located right behind this drywall. I am gonna leave a piece of tape on that area and then I'm gonna keep moving this until it hits the next stud. Sometimes it doesn't read properly, so I am gonna double check it. As you can see, there is a stud here and there. Now I am going to get some more tape and keep on moving it. There is another stud here and another stud here. So this way we know where exactly we have all these studs. I use the same method to locate all my ceiling joists. This way I know where exactly all of them are located. I did this on both sides of the room and these blue tapes are indicating the exact location of my ceiling joists. So basically my ceiling joists are going this way. I did this so I can space my pot lights accordingly and also when I'm trying to drill the holes for my pot lights, I'm not going to hit these ceiling joists. This way my pot lights are going to install nice and perfectly. I'm just done with finding the exact location for my pot lights. I turned on that a small laser level here. It runs a line all around the room here. And if we go up here, you can see the line. So I left the mark, in my case, 30 inches from there, right from that corner on this side of the ceiling. I repeated this on that area as well. I left the mark right from there to here, 30 inches. And then I set up my laser level. This gave me this nice and a straight line. As you can see, those blue tapes are representing the ceiling uh, joists, basically. And uh, these green tapes are representing my pot light locations. So as you can see, I marked them exactly 30 inches away from each other. This way, they are kind of located right in between the two joists. So when I'm drilling this, I'm not gonna be hitting it. This camera is on zoom out right now. It might look pretty close, but if we just get there, it's pretty much about three inches away from the actual joist. So I thought this area is going to look a little bit empty in the center. So I found the exact center of the room and exact center of these four pot lights. I am going to drill another hole right there and install a light fixture. So this way the center of the room doesn't look too empty and all of this is going to be on dimmers. I know it's going to be a lot of light so they can dim the lighting if they want to. In that area at the very end that's going to be the kitchen. I am installing four pot lights here on four sides of this chandelier. This chandelier is going to be going. I am going to install a small pot, uh, light fixture for now and all of these lights are going to work on another switch that is located on this side on this wall. So now we figured out where exactly the location of all my pot lights are going to be. At this time right now is to figure out where I want the light switch. For me again I want it somewhere here. As far as the height normally the bottom uh, part of the box has to be 48 inches above the finished floor which I am going to measure it and leave a mark for myself. So in my application here, I am working in a bungalow. Downstairs right below me, there is a basement. It's completely finished up to this whole area. Right from this beam and after, there's nothing finished in that area. So as you can see here, I have this uh, cold air return. 
I got lucky here. I can drill a hole right inside the basement, like right downstairs. And right from there, I can run a wire and feed it right to my box. Basically, I can drill a hole inside one of those uh, joists that I have. I already removed the screws from this. So if we look inside this, we have joists, floor joists that are going this way. So I can drill a hole here and feed a wire from there, bring it up here and make a cut inside this drywall and install a junction box from here. I have to wire it and I'm going to show you how exactly I do the wiring without opening the drywall all the way to my pot lights. And again, I got lucky I have this. Chances are you're going to be dealing with a different situation. There is another way of doing it also, as you can see it here, down below here, we have this outlet and that outlet is located right on the left side of this uh, uh, stud. And uh, what we can do without opening the drywall, I can feed a wire from this box, take it all the way to the attic and from the attic, I can drill another hole inside this cavity and bring it down to the location of my light switch. How am I going to do this without opening the drywall? I'm going to show you that. So basically what I was explaining right now is to feed the actual wire that brings power to this light switch. So there's different ways of doing this. Keep in mind we're working in a very old house and I'm pretty confident there is asbestos in all these walls. If you don't know what asbestos is, it's a material that they used to use in a lot of building products and that uh, used to add a lot of uh, strength to the uh, building materials. It's a very cancerous material, so if you're cutting that out, you have to be extra careful. It's not a fun thing to deal with. Just keep that in mind. And also, sometimes you have to cut holes through the baseboard, through the crown molding, through plaster walls. Chances are you might have lead paint on the walls. Be extra careful, take all the necessary precautions, make sure to protect yourself as much as you can while you're doing this job. Make sure to wear a mask and take care of the rest of the process. I put my junction box on the wall and I drew a line with my pencil all the way around it. And then I cut it out with my multi-tool. I was holding that vacuum right underneath of it to manage the amount of dust and debris. Again, because I'm pretty confident there is asbestos in this wall, I am wearing a very good quality mask there. I made sure that the junction box fits pretty nice and snug inside this opening, but I removed it for now so I can feed my wires, then I'm gonna install it. I got myself a clothing hanger and I cut it down. Then I made it nice and straight and I bent down the bottom part a little bit. I'm going to show you why I did this and where I'm going to use it. I set up my laser line and I lined it up to the center of my junction box. And as you can see, this line is going all the way to the ceiling. I used my drill and a tiny drill bit to drill a hole right onto that laser line. And then I feed that hanger wire that I made earlier. I pushed it inside the hole and then I used some tape to keep it in place. Because I have crown moldings here and I wasn't able to drill the hole right on the corner, it's time to measure and see how far away that coat hanger is sitting from the actual wall. This way when I go inside the attic, I know where exactly to drill so I can feed my wire down to the electrical box. Before I go inside the attic, I like to drill all the holes for my pot lights. Because I'm planning on installing 4 inch pot lights, I got myself a hole saw that is 4 and quarter. You want the hole saw to be slightly bigger. I also have a dust bowl and this is to collect all the dust when I'm drilling these holes. You can get these from Amazon or any electrical supplier in your area. Now all we need to do is to put that hole saw right inside this bowl and from the other end we can connect it to our drill. So this is how it's going to look like when it's completely installed. Keep in mind it could be a little bit dusty so you will definitely need a mask and eye protection. Now it's time to put the drill bit right onto our mark and keep that dust bowl in place and then start drilling our hole. It's pretty difficult to drill through these plaster walls because there's some kind of a metal mesh inside them and when you drill it your drill bit keeps getting caught. As a result I went through two of these hole saws for this project. Now it's time to score the insulation with a knife. This way we can push our hand through this hole and feed our wires. To make my life a little bit easier here, I called my friend and he stopped by to give me a hand. So I am holding the wire in my hand. I go inside the attic through the hole that we made and he puts his hand inside the next hole and grab that wire from me and pulls it down. Now the wiring is done from the first hole to the second. 
Now we have to continue the wiring from the second hole to the third one. So I went there, I fed the wire from the third hole and he got it from the second hole and pulled it down. Now we're going to repeat this for all the other holes. So this is how it looks like after we completely finished up the wiring part. Pretty much from the very first hole we fed a wire to the second hole, from the second hole we went to the third one, from the third one we went to the fourth one and so on we continued all the way till we got to this one. We draw an extra line from this one to this hole because we're going to be installing a light fixture and the rest was the same we kept on moving to the next holes. Now from the inside part of the attic we have to pull another wire right from the first pot light hole and we have to bring it all the way here to the gang box that we just installed. Our switch is going to be right here and in order to bring power to this light switch we're going to pull another wire and go all the way to the basement through this cavity and right at the main panel we're going to install a dedicated breaker for it. It's about time to go inside the attic. Now I'm inside the attic and this is that clothing hanger that we fixed and pushed through the ceiling. I use the white color clothing hanger because it's super easy to spot it. You gotta be extra careful moving or walking inside the attic. You just wanna place your foot on all the ceiling joists. Pretty much you wanna put your foot on top of the wood. If you don't do it, you're gonna go right through the drywall and you're gonna fall down. So make sure to be extra careful when you go inside the attic. I pushed the insulation away so I have enough room to drill my hole. Now it's time to drill a hole about five and a half inches behind that clothing hanger. If you remember, I pushed that clothing hanger through the crown molding and it was setting about 4 inches off of the wall. So in order to make sure that the hole that I'm making right now is going to be right in between the two studs, I drilled the hole about 5.5 inches behind that clothing hanger. Now I am going to push this wire through the hole that I just made and my friend is standing down the stairs. He is going to grab this wire and pull it right out of the hole that we made for our junction box. Now we can take the other end of this wire to the first pot light hole. My friend is sticking his hand through that hole and I am going to give him the other end of this wire. He is going to pull it right through the ceiling. Now we can push the insulation back in place and get down the stairs. And by the way, we don't need that clothing hanger anymore so we can push it back down the stairs and get rid of it. Now I have one wire that comes from the attic and it goes all the way to the first hole. And right from that hole, basically, we run the other wires and it's connected to all the rest of the pot lights. So now I'm going to put on my last pot light here and then I am going to feed a wire from the basement all the way to this area and feed it to this light switch area. That's going to be our feed. I hold the wires next to each other and then I use my wire stripper to remove that insulation from the outer part of the wire. Now I cut these wires about 3 to 4 inches and then I use my wire stripper to strip the very end of them about 5 eighths of an inch. I hold these two wires right next to each other and I make them nice and straight. These spotlights lights normally come with a junction box and the junction box has two knockouts on both sides of it. If we open this junction box inside it we're going to have three sets of wires. Normally one black, one white and one yellow or green. I'm going to remove this knockout by moving it back and forward a few times. It's going to come right off. I got myself one of these plastic connectors and I'm going to squeeze it and put it in place. This is how it looks like. Back to the ceiling, I am going to line up the two wires and push it right through this plastic connector. I'm going to pull it gently from the other side and stack the white wires to white wires black to black and bare wire to bare. The wires inside this junction box come with these push connectors. Now it's time to connect all the white wires together, all the black wires have to be connected together and also the bare wires which are going to be the ground, they're also going to be connected to the green or the yellow wire that comes from the junction box. Once we are done with connecting all these wires together, we are going to push them inside this junction box and close the lid. It's time to connect the wire that comes from the box to the wire that comes from the light. Normally there's a nut on it, make sure to tighten that up also. And then we're going to push the box and the wire right inside the cavity. At the end we are going to squeeze these spring parts and make sure there's no wire on the way. And then we drop this light in place. Those springs are going to hold this tight. If you remember I made an extra hole in the center of the room and I wanted to install a light fixture on it. So we had an extra wire that we pulled from this pot light. 
I put a piece of 2x4 through this hole making sure that the wire is not pinched underneath of it and then I stand it up inside the hole and pushed it right against that ceiling joist and I put two screws in it making sure it's set super nice and snug in place. I got myself a metal light box and I pushed my wires through the opening and then I tightened up the screw onto the wire. Then I connected my ground wire to the actual body of the box. Then I used two screws to attach this to the piece of wood that I just installed. And at the end I installed my light fixture to this light box. Now that everything is ready, it's time to drill a hole into the floor joist. I'm gonna drill this hole and then I'm gonna feed a wire right from the electrical panel through this hole all the way to the light switch, which in my case is located right above here. This is the junction box that I'm gonna be using for my light switch. This is a single gang box and I can put some screws here and attach it right to that stud or the 2x4 right next to it. If you have to place your box somewhere that there's no stud right next to it, you can use one of these boxes. The good thing is it comes with these four extra holes and you can install the screws right into the drywall. This is gonna hold it in place. In order to feed my wires through this box, I have to remove a knockout from the top and one knockout from the bottom of this box. And then I have to loosen up these inside the screws so this way the wire can feed through this box. Now I have two wires that are coming out of this opening. The top one goes to the lights and the bottom one is the feed wire that came all the way from the panel through the basement through that hole that I made through that joist from the cold air return area. I pushed both of these wires through the openings that we just made onto this box. I pulled them out completely and then I pushed this box inside the opening and I used two screws to attach it to the 2x4 or the stud that is sitting right next to it. Now it's time to cut and adjust our wires so we can connect them to our light switch. I used my wire stripper to remove the insulation from the wires. And then I cut my wires in a way when it's done they're going to be hanging out of the box about 6 inches. I stripped the end of these wires about 3 quarter of an inch. Then I pushed the wires back inside the box and tightened up the screw on it. Now it's time to connect the ground wire to the ground screw. I grabbed the ground wire that comes from the feed or from the panel and I put it around the actual ground screw. Make sure to go clockwise before you tighten down the screw on it. Then I grabbed my pliers and twisted the ground wires together. Then I made sure to cut all these wires the same length and remove about 3 quarter of an inch of that insulation from the end of these wires. I got the light switch and I connected the green wire to the grounds. Then I pushed it back inside the box. Now it's time to connect one of the black wires from the switch to one of the black wires from the box. It doesn't matter which one to which. I start twisting the wires by hand and then I put this wire nut on top of it and turn it until it's super nice and snug. If it's connected properly, the actual wires also twist around each other for at least two turns. Also make sure to give it a pull test so it doesn't come loose whatsoever. Now it's time to connect the other two black wires together. Again it doesn't matter which black wire from the box is connected to which black wire from the switch. As long as they're connected properly, they're twisted around each other nice and good and the wire tie is the snug on it, you're gonna be good. Now at the very end it's time to connect the two white wires together. I like to use my pliers to twist these wires first and then I'm gonna put the wire knot on top of it and tighten it up. Here is a close up look after the job is done. As you can see the ground wires are all connected together. The one black from the switch is connected to a black from the junction box. This is another black that is connected to another black wire and both of the white wires are connected together. Now it's time to push these wires to the very back part of the box. Make sure to take your time because the back part of this light switch is pretty big. You want to push them pretty far back so this light switch can sit nice and clean in place. The light switch comes with two screws so we can attach it to the body of the box. I'm not going to put those screws on because I have some damage to my plasterboard here. I have to paint this whole entire house anyway so I patch these areas before I paint the entire house. If you also want to learn how to paint a full house, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. 
After the paint job was done, I put on these screws and then I put the cover plate on top of it. So now that my wiring job is completely done at the light switch, we brought the other feed wire all the way to the electrical panel and it's time to install a circuit breaker for it. So in my panel, I have a bunch of room left for it. Chances are maybe you don't have any room in your electrical panel. A lot of times right next to your panel, you get an outlet like this one. Or let's say if you're pulling the power from one of the receptacles right inside the room that you're installing your pot lights in, uh, let's say you wanna get your power from that one. I'm gonna also show you guys how to connect your wires to one of these. So this is the wire that I got. It came all the way uh, from that light switch to the electrical panel that I have here. Uh, but before I show you guys how to install this, I'm gonna show you guys how exactly we feed these wires uh, through the floor joists and stuff and how exactly we staple it just to be on the safe side before I show you how to tap it into the actual main electrical panel. If you have to drill holes through the floor joist to feed your wires through to get it to the actual electrical panel, make sure to drill these holes right in the center part of it. And if you have any heat ducts, make sure to place an insulation piece in between the wire and the actual duct to prevent it from melting. Staples are designed to keep the wires in place. If you have to use the staples, make sure not to hammer them down too much. You don't want to pinch the wires. It's very important to use the right type of breaker for the right wire. As you saw me in the video, I wasn't installing this white wire. In my case, this is a 14-2 uh, Romex wire. This is 14 gauge wire. So for the 14 gauge wire, we're supposed to install a 15 amp breaker. If you have yellow wires like these ones, those are thicker gauge. For those wires, you have to install a 20 amp breaker. The procedure is exactly the same. You just need to make sure to use the right breaker for the right wire. Now it's time to remove the insulation from our wire so we can feed it through the actual electrical panel. So I have two methods to show you guys here. I have a uh, wire stripper. I'm gonna put this onto my wire. And this is gonna allow, allow me to remove this insulation part from my wire. This does a very nice and clean job. If you don't have these, you can even use a diagonal cut pliers. You can cut the insulation part from your wire a little bit. Then you can pull both sides of it and then grab your ground wire and keep on going until you get the length that you want. And at the very end, you can cut it again using the same plier set. So the wire is stripped now and it's time to feed it through the actual panel. On the top part of the panel here, if you take a look, we have some uh, knockouts. Uh, we have to remove one of these knockouts so we can feed our wire through. The way it works basically, you can put a screwdriver right onto it and tap it and then move that little broken piece a few times until it comes off. When it comes off, you're going to have a hole like this one. And for that hole, we have these wire connectors. I removed a few breakers. That's the reason why I have a few empty spots here. The way this wire connector works, you just pinch it and push it inside this hole and let it go. This sits nice and snug in place. Now, before I feed my wire through, I have to turn off the main uh, breaker to the whole house. If I open my panel normally on the top or on the side or maybe on the bottom part in your case, you're gonna have a very big, uh, breaker uh, pretty much. In my case, this is a 100 amp. It could be 200 amp in your case. If I turn this off, the whole power to the entire house is gonna go off. So I'm gonna turn it off right now. I have a battery operated light here. My, the power to the entire house is gone now. So now I can safely remove the panel here, the actual door from here, and then I'm gonna feed this wire through. Make sure not to lose these screws. These are specialty screws. The end is not sharp, so when it goes inside the panel, it's not gonna pinch any wires. Now the door comes off. So now it's time to feed our wire right through this box. I'm gonna push this wire through that connector, the plastic connector, and I'm gonna grab it from the other end and pull it through, just like so. Now the wire is completely inside the box. 
So I have a white wire here, I have a bare wire and a black wire. The bare wire goes right to the rest of the bare wires at the very bottom part of my box. I have an area that all the ground wires are going into. Sometimes this could be located on different areas of different panels. It depends on your uh, uh, panel make and model. So I'm gonna loosen up this uh, screw and feed this wire through that area and tighten it down. Make sure the screw is pretty nice and tight on it. And I'm gonna cut that extra wire. Now it's time to connect our white wire. So on the very side of my panel, if you come closer and take a look, we have these white wires connected to this uh, kind of a bar here, and we have a lot of these uh, screws. So I have an empty spot here at the very bottom. I'm gonna loosen up this uh, screw, and then I'm gonna adjust my wire to this area. I know that it's gonna be good enough this much, so I'm gonna cut it from here, and I strip the end of it for about half an inch, or let's say, five-eighths of an inch. Now I'm gonna loosen up that screw, and then we push this through, and then we tighten up that screw right onto it. It's better if you use the screwdrivers. Now for my black wire, because I installed a 14-2 wire, I have to install a 15-amp breaker for it. If you use the yellow wire that is like this one, you have to install a 20 amp uh, breaker for it. In my application, 15 would be ideal. So I just push the wire here and kind of see how long would be enough. This is perfect for my case. I'm gonna cut it and remove the insulation about half an inch from it. Then on our breaker, we have a screw on the very bottom part of it. I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit was already loose. Now we're gonna feed our wire through here, push it right in, and then I'm gonna tighten up that screw on it. We have to make sure that this screw is nice and all these wires that we connect are completely nice and tight. So my breaker is good now. At the very back side of the breaker here, I have this shape. That shape is supposed to sit right onto that area, like so and then I line it up with the rest of the uh, breakers and then I push it in place. It has to kind of fill down and set like this, nice and snug. If I turn it on right now and turn on the main electrical uh, breaker, it's gonna be powered and the lights will work. In my case, I'm pretty confident it's gonna work, so I am gonna put my uh, cover back on and tighten it up. If you're not too sure about what you did, turn on the main uh, breaker Give it a shot. If you're satisfied, come down the stairs again, turn off your uh, breaker and, and install your uh, cover for it. And also before you put your cover back on top, as you can see here, I removed some of these breakers from this area. They're normally closed like this. These tabs also can break off. So normally, again, you have to break one of these. I didn't have to do it here on this panel. You can break off and then put your panel on top and then put your screws back on. For this specific application, I don't have to staple my wires here because it's all stapled from the back part of this plywood. And I show you that in a little bit. Uh, but normally if you don't have this set up and all the wires are coming right from the top, make sure to apply a staple. Don't push the staple too far in. The staples are just meant to hold the wires in place. They're not supposed to kind of squish or pinch the wires. It's not right. Make sure it's sitting nice and loose. As long as it keeps the wire in place, you should be good. Now it's time to show you guys how to connect your wire to a receptacle in case you did this inside the bedroom, living room, or some area, and you're taking the power right from the receptacle. This is how I do it normally. I find the exact breaker for it. In my case, this is the first one. So this is completely off right now. Even though the power is completely off to this light switch right now, it's a good idea to connect the light or something to the top and the bottom one just to make sure that there's no power coming into it in case if you don't have one of these live circuit uh, finders. So now I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure that there's no power coming to this one. I'm gonna remove the cover from here and show you what's going on in the inside part.
Now the receptacle is completely out of the box and I have the wire that comes all the way from the upstairs from the actual light switch. We wanna connect it to this receptacle. I have one of these uh, box connectors, sorry, the wire connectors, the same plastic ones. And on the very top part of this box, we have that knockout area. I pushed the knockout and I uh, moved it with a plier a few times, it came right off. Now we install this right on the very top portion. We pinch it and put it in place. I am gonna remove a little bit of this insulation from my wire and pull this down. So this is a strip now. We're gonna feed this wire through the box and I'm gonna pull it from the other way. There you have it. Now the black and white wires, I'm gonna push them away here. On the very bottom part of the box here, we have that uh, ground screw. I'm gonna loosen that up and connect my wire here. I'm gonna go right around it. Make sure to go clockwise. If you go the other way, it's gonna loosen up. I have a bunch of other wires there too. I'm gonna just simply tighten them up a little bit. There you go. Now I'm gonna tighten up that ground wire. Now I'm gonna cut that extra wire from here. There you go. Now I only have the white and the black wire here. And then on my receptacle, I have two sets of wires that are already connected to it. There's no empty space. If we take a look at the back side of this receptacle, we have these holes. So I can connect my wires to these ones. If you take a look at this uh, receptacle, we have these golden screws. Those are for the hot wires, basically the black ones. It also says it on this side of the receptacle. And on the other side where we have the silver screws, we can connect the white wires. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna strip my wires a little bit. I'm just going to strip them about 5 eighths of an inch. There is a guide actually on the very top part of this receptacle at the very back. You can actually check it. It must be the same size. Now we can push it through these ones. You can push it right onto the hole and push it all the way in. Put it onto the hole and push it all the way in. There you go. It has to go all the way in. So now this is completely done. I am gonna push all the wires together, make it nice and neat, and push this right inside the box. Now it's time to connect our screws again. Now I can put the top plate in place and connect the two wires. And after I turn on the breaker, the lights will work upstairs. Now I'm gonna go upstairs and show you guys the options onto the light switch itself. The light switch is working perfect right now and this is the remote control. In order to link these two together, we have to hold the off button on the actual light switch for about six to seven seconds until these lights go on and off. Now we're gonna repeat the same process onto the remote control. So we have to hold down the off switch on this remote also for about five to six seconds until the light on the very top corner goes off. Now these two are linked together and they're working perfect. The process would be exactly the same if you want to add some more remote controls. This remote control could be used exactly as is. You can have it pretty much anywhere in the room and kind of work with it just like a remote control for a TV. Or if you want to, you can install it onto the walls. I'm gonna show you how to install it onto the wall. If you want to pair this switch with the phone application, you can hold this button for six seconds until the lights go off, and then you can follow the rest of the procedure on your phone. Keep in mind, you only have to do this on the actual light switch, not on the remotes. To mount the remote onto the wall, I got myself one of these wall plate brackets. There's a clear plastic piece inside it that has the soft tab on it. At the back side of the actual remote control, there's a double-sided tape. You can connect this right to the wall using that double-sided tape if you want to, or you can remove the plastic piece that that double-sided tape is sitting right onto it, and then slide this right onto that loose part from that clear bracket. 
Now you can even install this on a gang box. All you need to do is to put these two screws in. I used two small screws to connect this to the wall. It's time to install the cover plates and we're going to be done with the installation process. You might say what happened to that dining area chandelier. We removed it from there and then we feed a wire right from there to the first spotlight hole. Then from the first spotlight hole we went to the second one and then to the third one and to the fourth one. The same way that we installed the pot lights for the rest of the house. Then we installed the new light fixture and a new light switch for it. Now all these four pot lights and that light fixture run at the same time when you hit the switch on and off. And the switch is also a dimmer switch. So the light can be adjusted at the dining area in case they want to get romantic. There you have it guys. As you can see, it turned out pretty nice and beautiful. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe for more renovation related videos. And I am uploading a bunch of cool videos over the holidays. I hope you guys enjoy them all. Thanks a million for watching this video. See you in the next one. Till then, peace.